you know, well, the, the process of a painting starts with an idea. Maybe it's from riding motorcycles across the country and you know, we're, we're sitting in a place with a great barn and the lighting is amazing and um, it just looks like it would be a great painting. Maybe it's uh, like Olivia, like the painting I did called In Your Dreams. Olivia is doing lip gloss on the, you know, in the painting using the mirror on the bike. And that's because I've seen them do that so many times over the years riding with them. So the idea came from life's experience. Same with the wine art. It might be the way the wine glass was set up with the bottle and a candle and something else on the table. So a lot of the paintings, the ideas start from real life. Some of them might even start with the title first. Thinks of it, what he wants, the estimate about what he wants. Then he usually tries photographing it, which you really need to have. You need photo reference for photorealistic artwork. Well, once you, once you come up with the idea for a painting, um, then I try to recreate it with photo reference. Um, so if it's a motorcycle piece and I have a, a model in it, I'll take hundreds of photographs at different angles, maybe even different types of day to get the lighting right. And then I'll, I'll take all those and put them in the computer and I'll look at them all. And I'll try to find, because you know, as a photographer yourself or a film guy, you, you know that you've got to take a lot of film to get a couple good minutes of you know, great stuff, or you have to take a lot of photographs to get that one amazing photograph. And it's the same as an artist, because as a photorealist, I am only as good as the research that I have. If I got an amazing photograph of a motorcycle or a person and it's really poor quality and lighting's bad, I have to try to think all through that. So the better the quality of the photograph, to me, the better the painting's gonna be. Um, he photographs it, then he gets the reference, he sketches it out on huge or small canvas or paper or whatever, and then that's when he gives it to me, where it's just white with pencil lines. And I usually start with black, which is like the, mo the deepest of background colors, and you move forward. You, you do the background, then you move forward. Um, and I just chip away at it. I go at it, I stay on it for a week to two months, depending on the size and the detail of it. That's, that's how it all starts, pencil and white. <laughs> to be able to make a commitment for two to three months on a painting, whether it's 300 hours, 500 hours, I've gotta be really into what I'm working on. The hardest part about blocking in is making it solid because you have black that might need two coats and you have red, you have green, you have yellow that is seriously so many coats where like I'd say a bigger area that's red that needs eight coats is better than a million little tiny squares all over the canvas is red. Oh, can't forget that one up there that only has one coat and then these all have four by now. Like it's just constant paint blow dry, paint blow dry and that's that's my full day of work sometimes, is one color on a huge canvas, eight hours of just paint, blow dry, paint the same color all day in every different little tiny area on the canvas. It's Sometimes watching him paint and seeing how quickly he gets like a rose petal done with a million water drops on it, it'll take you know an hour or two, and for me and for him, that's quick. And that's amazing. He needs, he needs to be given a painting like ready for all of his crazy detail. Kind of like, yeah, it's already filled in and he can just add those highlights, those, that texture that he has so many different techniques that just work. The petals, oh, this is how you do it. And I just watch him like, uh-huh. It's so easy just like this. Sure. <laughs> So we're getting ready to do a photo shoot on a piece that I'm going to call Gimme Shelter. It's an idea I came up with before because some people cherish their bike so much when it rains they probably want to hold an umbrella over it to keep it from getting wet. So we're going to have Olivia hunched down kind of behind the bike and she's going to have an umbrella over her so that she can not only protect herself but protect this prized possession of her Harley Davidson. So let's get started. You ready? More than I'll ever be. Let's put, actually I'm going to hold your helmet back. We don't need your helmet because you're not going to have it in there anyway. Put Black gloves on and then get behind the bike over here. I'm going to shoot from this side. Good. Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Caleb, 
just start, what I want you to do each time, just keep moving, you know, like every couple seconds. Move a little bit, you know, turn your head a little more away from me, and then I love up, sorry. down. But don't forget, you're... At least my bike's still warm. Yeah. <laughs> you ready? Uh, the background, I'm going to make it like foggy and trees kind of out of focus so it looks like... It's Not an ugly fence. Well, it's kind of like what I want in the background now, but it's no covered, fence. Yeah. I'll put yeah, a bunch of trees back there. My dad always starts his paintings usually with photo reference, which you really need for photorealism so you can have all the right angles and lighting and reflections. Um, I've learned that in order for me to do my art, because that's kind of the same genre, the same, same realism, style. same style I want to do. You've been coming up with great compositions, like mm -hmm. with the legs paintings that you're doing, because it's all about the image. You know, you're trying to do something that's commercial, that's going to sell to people, that's going to connect with people, and it's it's um, that's not the easiest thing. <laughs>